Man, am I tired of the Celtics team. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, DSD, and we're here with another edition of our YouTube. So today, we're going to be talking about what is wrong with the Celtics. I am a Celtics fan, and it's painful to watch them every single night. I have, like, multiple reasons why I think they're horrible, and I'll tell you why. So if you're new here, make sure you subscribe down below. We cover it all. All sports stuff. Everything, guys. Memes, funny stuff, arguments, hot takes, anything sports related, we cover it here. So if you like that, make sure you subscribe down below and hit that bell because you don't want to miss anything else coming up. So on the other side, I'm going to talk about why the Celtics are horrible. See you then. What's up, y'all? It's your boy, DSD, and we're here with another edition of our YouTube. Can I drink my water? I got a new thing. I got a new arm. It actually looks pretty sick. It looks way more legit. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. What is wrong with the Celtics? They are painful to watch. I am a diehard Celtics fan. And let me tell you, they're at the point where I don't even want to watch them anymore. There's 10 reasons why they're terrible in my opinion. And honestly, it's not talent. They're one of the most talented teams in the NBA. They have three guys, including Kemba Walker. And trust me, we will get to that guy. That can score 20 points in any night. They have talent everywhere. They have two all-stars, Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown. They're both incredible this year. They were put lighting it up, putting up big numbers. They're great, but they can't hold on to a lead. So let's break it down here. I have like a few reasons why I believe the Celtics are the way, the way they are and some questions we get to ask. So let me get out my little book here. Let's start off by saying, what is wrong with them? There's a few things wrong with these guys. They're, they're hard to watch. So the first thing I want to say is they blow leads constantly. They blow these big leads. They're up by 15 points, 20 points, 30 points, and they still lose. I mean, obviously it has something to do with Marcus Smart not being around, but guys, it's not an excuse. If you're up by 20 points, there's runs in basketball. It always happens. Trust me. I get it. It's up and down. There's sometimes where the, every team's going to get their run. There's 10 point swings. I can literally watch one quarter of basketball in the same game then watch the third quarter and I'm like wait is this the same game because it's all about runs in the NBA and you just got to withstand those runs but you can't let people come back from 20 point down it happens sometimes but not all the time Celtics also can't start well for some reason they start like poop doo-doo in the first quarter they can't even come out and take this seriously it feels like they have to like start slow every single time they're always feels like they're always down they're always coming back and then when they do come back they can't finish it so it's like they're losing games right from the beginning they have no chance of being in them because it's just like almost like they're not even trying the number one thing i gotta look at is kemba walker is absolutely killing the celtics and i am a kemba walker fan dude i defend this dude to the wall i am like all in on this dude he's like like literally was one of my favorite players i don't know what's wrong with him but he's killing them i mean like literally killing them and it's not a great look guys when he's after the game smiling i know that's the way he is and i respect that because he's a happy guy but like your team's losing take this more seriously it's almost like it's okay to lose for some of these guys i'm a fan and it obviously sucks for me, but if losing to me is, is absolutely not allowed. I mean, like, it's the Boston Celtics. We're not some, like, dumpy franchise. What is happening? And there's a lot of people you get to point at. They don't have any depth on the bench. They don't have any big man presence. Tristan Thompson was the option that we brought in. I know he's okay this year. Robert Williams, he's okay. They're not drafting well. They're not bringing the right players. They always have the guards and the, you know, the stretch fours and guys wing players but they just never have a big man and i get that it's moving away from that but if the celtics had like an andre drummond type they may be right in business they might be fine they might be like a top three team in the east but honestly at this point i think it has to do a lot with brad stevens a lot with danny Ying. these guys need to get to take a long look in the mirror because at this point brad stevens has been in the league for what like seven eight years i'm gonna check this just to double check so brad stevens has been on the coach for the celtics since 2013 so that's eight years they have done nothing. I know they make the Eastern Conference Finals a couple times, but like, it's not exactly Brad Stevens' fault. Let me just take a step back here. Early on, he had no one to play with. Like literally, they were just always just trading all these right things. There's no excuse, guys. He was good enough to win right now. So it feels like Brad is still stuck in that college stuff because it sucks because I love Brad. I, I don't want to like 
bash him or trash him. But at the end of the day, guys, you gotta be able to point a finger at someone who's putting the rotations together. Uh, he was stuck on this big man rotation with Tyson, you know, Tristan Thompson, and finally started working a little bit. But I don't know. I, I'm just so frustrated. And I honestly think it has a lot to do with Danny Ainge. Danny Ainge has historically made unbelievable trades, but he doesn't make win win trades for both sides. He wants to absolutely embarrass the other person, make them look stupid, and literally cause them just to like give up all their assets for nothing. So, like, I can give you a couple examples Isaiah Thomas. That was an insane trade. Um, they gave up, I think, Marcus Thornton in a first-round pick for Isaiah Thompson. It was like a late first-round pick, complete garbage. It was a it was a grand slam for the Celtics, obviously. Then, obviously, the Nets won when the pass when they traded KG and got all those, you know, and uh, Paul Pierce with got all those picks. Unbelievable trade, probably one of the greatest trades in history. But he's not willing to make the one-for-one -one trades to make his team better. And I listen, I'm not the GM. I'm not here to tell you who he should be trading for. But I gotta tell you, he needs to do something with this team. They're good enough to win right now. They're not beating the Nets. Ever since the James Harden got the net, you know, went to the Nets, no one's beating the Nets, and I'm making a YouTube video on that too. No one's going to beat the Nets. They're, they don't even have KD right now, and they're absolutely running the league. So that's just my opinion. Well, I'll get into that in another video. Man, I am so frustrated with the Celtics team. I can't even watch them. I, I, you know, I genuinely, generally don't even miss a game. But they've been hard to watch, guys. They can't even... It's almost making me not be a fan of them because they're they just like look like they don't even care losing big leagues like that are so frustrating because You're they're too good to be doing that say that they were like an overachieving team They're a nice little cute team and they were losing big games But like they came and played, you know played really hard you can you can get behind that Jason Tatum is literally almost a top 10 player. Jalen Brown is a top 20 player. Kemba Walker, when he's healthy, I don't even know if that's even a possibility anymore, is a top 25 player. They should be way better than they are right now. And I have, I don't even know what the, the main issue is, but everything on list is a piece of it. I can tell you this though, it has a lot to do with the rotations. It has a lot to do with the bench talent. And it makes me start questioning if Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum are not good enough. Cause I think they're great, but it's like, what else could they do? They're unbelievable, but they just need a couple more years, but we don't have time. They just signed them to max contracts. Jalen Brown thinks in the second year, it's already almost over. Like this is the craziest part guys. The NBA is a short lived thing. And every four to five years, teams turn over unless they re-sign, which is why these dynasties in the NBA are so, you know, so crazy. These teams are good for five years. Generally, you lose your players and then you start over again. Then you have to work your way back up. The Celtics are already somehow at the end of their run. It's crazy. I'm hopeful that this is just a, a bad year. We make it in the playoffs, sneak in, do some things. And at the end of the day, we, you know, win a couple rounds or win a round. But I'm not even sure it's possible at this point. I'm, I'm really down on the Celtics. So I want to hear what you think. Let me know in the comments. If you made it this far, make sure you subscribe down below. Oh, sorry, it's a little more of a, a frustrated one because usually I'm more like upbeat and happy, but I'll, I'm kind of done with these guys and I don't even know what to say about them anymore. So I appreciate you listening. I'll talk to you soon.